What's up guys, it's Brown again from Lake Hickory Scuba and Marine. Today's video topic is going to be on how to pick out the proper mask for you. And there's so many different options out there. When we think about scuba masks, sometimes we get bombarded with colors or frames or shapes or lens type. And we don't really focus on what's the most important thing such as proper fit. And when we talk about the proper fit of a scuba mask, it's not the mask itself that we need to make sure it fits, but it's that skirt. And we actually have two skirts on a scuba mask. If we take a quick look at this one, this is the Marius One Vision. And when we think about the skirt, we typically think about the outside or the external skirt. But what we really need to be focusing on is this internal skirt right here. That's the part that actually seals to, to us to allow air to be trapped into the mask and water not to come in. Now there's several different size skirts. This one here on the Marez X Vision, this is just your regular size skirt. The one here on the One Vision, this is a sunrise model, meaning it's a larger size skirt. So that means it's even though they're virtually the same mask, same frames, different lenses, but same frames, this skirt is a little bit larger than this skirt. So it's designed for someone who has a little bit larger face than someone else. This is a mid-frame style here. This is a Marlin Purge mask. It's designed for a smaller somebody with a smaller stature, or maybe even a kid, if you will. So the, the skirt's going to be a little bit smaller. And based off your face shape, it's going to determine what skirt you need to, to fit. Now, when we think about how do we size that mask, how do we make sure the skirt fits, it's really simple. All we do is simply take our mask, and we want to pull the mask strap down to the bottom because we don't actually excuse me we don't actually need the mask strap to see if it fits properly all i'm going to do is simply seat the mask onto my face i want to create a suction by inhaling through my nose and then i'm going to look down and what i'm doing is simulating Boyle's law or simulating that water pressure pushing in on me and as i inhale i want to look down move my head around and see if that mask stays seated on my face And as long as it's sealed and it doesn't fall off, then you're actually going to have a very good fit. Now sometimes, and I'll, I'll see if you can hear it in the video, sometimes you'll hear a little bit of air seeping through. And what causes that is men who have facial hair, or if you got, say if your uh, temples on the side of your head are, are dipped in a little bit greater, you'll actually have some air being sucked into the mask when you do this. And what that tells you is, is if that air is coming into the mask, also, water can come into the mask when you're underwater. So let me see if you can hear that air coming through the mask. Hopefully you could hear that. And usually if we hear that, then that tells me that that mask is not a good fit. So what I'd want to do is pick up another one and do the same test. Now, unfortunately, I'm always going to have a little bit of air seeping through during this test because I do have facial hair. And to seal it with facial hair, sometimes we can use chapstick or they make a commercialized wax that you can put on your, your mustache or something like that. Some people use beeswax as well. So anything that we can do to help the mask seal, one thing that I do is when I wear a mask is I'll also wear a hood that keeps that skirt pressed in. Now one thing that we don't want to do is when we do this test, we never really want to use the strap itself because sometimes people will make the strap so tight that the mask seals, but we don't want that mask tight because of Boyle's Law. When you're underwater, pressure increases on that mask, which is automatically going to create a suction. That means the volume inside the mask is going to be a lot less than what it was at the surface, and that creates a suction on the blood vessels underneath your skin. And you can always tell someone who's had their mask too tight. They'll have this nice pretty ring all the way around where the mask sealed. Or sometimes they'll even come up with two black eyes where it's pulled that blood out of the vessels up underneath the skin. So when I wear a mask, the strap, and this happens to be my personal mask here, the strap is very, very loose. I mean, it, it, it hardly has any tension on the back of my head at all. And I allow that water pressure to seal the mask by simply pressing in. 
okay? So now once I have determined what mass skirt that I actually need, now I can start looking at some of the other features of the mask that I may want to pick. Because like I said, in the beginning, some people get caught up on cosmetics, how many lenses, what colors, and we really need to be focused on how the mask fits. Now that I've determined all these masks fit and they seal properly, now I can start looking at other features such as, do I want a dual lens? The benefit of a dual lens I can pop the lenses out and put prescription lenses in. If I don't need prescription lenses, maybe I want to go with a full lens mask, okay? Maybe I need not prescription lenses, but maybe I need bifocal lenses or just reading glasses, if you will. And sometimes they make masks that have bifocals built in. They even make some that glue into the mask themselves so that you can make any mask into a bifocal lens. Maybe I want a mask that has a tri-view lens. This Mares I3 here, it's one of the most popular Mares masks, um, it has tri-view lenses, so it's going to allow more peripheral vision while you're underwater. Speaking of uh, peripheral vision, you may even want to go with a clear skirted mask versus a dark skirt mask, and that allows more light to come in. So now if I'm doing photography or spearfishing, something like that, I may want to go with a dark skirt, but if I want to be able to see more of an open area or see more colors, maybe I want to go with a clear skirt or even a tri-view. So I've determined on the mask skirt, I've determined on the style of mask, I've even determined on what features, you know, one that we haven't talked about yet is the purge mask. Some masks will actually have a purge valve here in the nose cap, and what that allows makes it a lot easier to clear the mask if water comes in. Now, we remember from our open water class, we tilt our head back, press in at the, at the top, exhale through our nose, and we're able to clear the mask or purge the mask of water. But with the purge mask itself, all you have to do is simply exhale through your nose and that purge makes it very easy to clear the water out. So the last thing I wanna do is start looking at all the features. The most important thing on, on proper mask sizing is does the skirt fit your face? Once you've determined that, then you can go through all the different masks, pick out the features you want, and then at the last, I can go through and pick what color of skirt or what color of frame that I want. So guys, when you go to get a new mask, try your best not to get caught up in the features or the colors or the cosmetics, but make sure you pick one out that fits you appropriately with a skirt and then build your features on top of that. So guys, I really hope this video makes it easy for you to go out and purchase you a new mask. If you got any questions on any of these masks, such as the Mares X Vision, this is the one I personally use. I've got the Mares One Vision here in a sunrise or a large frame. I've got a Marlin Purge here by head. I've got, this is XS Scuba's um, bifocal mask or gauge reader mask, and then of course I got the Mares I3. If you got any questions on any of these masks, simply put it down in the comment section below. I'll try to answer you as quickly as I can. Guys, I really appreciate you watching this video. If you got any questions at all or comments, simply put it down below. As always, check back each week for a new video. Make sure you follow us on Instagram and Twitter, like us on Facebook, pin us on Pinterest, subscribe to us here on YouTube, and as always guys, we appreciate your business.